Hello there, welcome back. So today we're gonna start by setting up our programming environment for programming language compare. And we're gonna start with Mac OS setup. Assuming that so you have nothing installed, assuming you have nothing installed, um, you're gonna want to actually wanna start with Xcode for Mac OS. So Xcode is an editor that Apple gives you an IDE not editor, IDE, and all development environment with the tools that is provided by Apple. And it's probably the easiest way for you to get started. So you want to start off by opening up App Store, searching for Xcode, install it if you don't have it installed. And what is the benefit of installing Xcode? Well, the best way is to jump to Google or wherever your favorite software engine is. And if you search for something like C++ command line development for Mac OS, you might find something like this. Um, number of pages that explains it, but here's one. This one page here tells me pretty much everything that I want to convey to you, which is basically, even if you're not going to use the Xcode IDE, the fact that it comes from Apple, it is bundled with the build tools and everything, you might as well just in, forget it, install it, and then the second part there is to get the command line tools, you want to run that command there. And so that's exactly what I did. Please note, however, that you also get um, Git with this. And this show you why. Um, when I type Git version, you can see that my Git version says it's from you know Apple. But because it's pretty recent, I'm not going to worry about um, overwriting it with the one from the SCM website. So that is for installing basically C, C++ and Git. You get like a triple combo when you do the Xcode install. All right, let's move on now. Go tools plugin installation. And this one is pretty straightforward. All you're gonna do is go to the Golang website, download, um, click on download, select the um, latest version for your platform. In this case, we're gonna do OS X and then save it to your system. Then I'm gonna go find that downloaded file in my downloads folder, and double click on it, and follow the prompt to install. And that's pretty much it. Mine is not gonna install because mine have so much a later version already installed, the latest, so it's not gonna do anything. Python installation is similarly straightforward. Go to the website, download it. I'm gonna check here and see on my system already have 2.7. Uh, I think Mac comes with, two, with Python already installed. But um, this is 2.7.10, and I see it all 3.6.1 is available. So I'm going to download that. And once it's downloaded, I'm going to do the same thing. Double click, follow the prompt, type in a password if you have to supply an um, admin user to install, and it's going to install. And once you restart your system, it should be in place. Unfortunately, to get into the right Java download is a mess. So let's say you start here. You, it's going to still look confusing with too many things to download. The only interesting thing is all you want to download is the JDK for your platform, not a JRE, not Java with NetBeans, unless you plan to use NetBeans or anything like that. And you're going to see the DMG file there, download it for Mac. Um, best thing to do is to just click the link that I provide below this video to take you straight to the place. And so once you have the file, installing it is no different than how you install Python, for example, or the Go tool. Okay, so now I'm going to install Scala, and this is going to be a little bit different. This is come as a package. I can choose any number of these ones to install, but I'm going to stick since I'm using my um, Visual Studio Code IDE editor. Um, I'm just going to download the compiler tools alone and no other editor. And so once it's downloaded, I double click on it. Um, you might have to install um, RAR or 7-zip if you double click on it. It doesn't unzip, but it should. And now this expand into these folders. Again, nothing to actually install like a package, but I have a directory and you could put it anywhere you like and I call it dev and instead of have directory called app and then I just drag the directory containing all the Scala stuff and put it in that directory. You can see I already have Scala installed, but I'm going to install this more updated version. And what I'm going to do is go to my, since I'm using ZSH, I'm going to go to my ZSH after directory and I have a prompt script there that runs, and I'm going to export, no, my export script, sorry, and I'm gonna export the Scala home here and add it to my path. And so this is version 2.12.2, and so I'm going to change this to 2.12.2, and since I already have everything configured for the previous version, it's just a matter of changing the version number, I'm gonna quit my shell, 
restart it and then once I check again at the Scala, the Scala version, I'll see I'll have the latest version of Scala, uh, which is that 2.12 that I just installed. And so that's the way you want to install Scala because there's no actual package to install. Now well, let's install Groovy. Groovy is pretty similar to um, Scala installation. Um, if you're not using Brew, for example, so you download it, expand it, put it in your directory. So I'm going to put mine side by side with my Scala um, installation in that dev app directory. And then I'm going to, again, go edit my um, exports and export that groovy ohm variable and then also add it to my path so that I can, um, of course, use groovy. Now, I'm not actually going to continue with this installation, but if I were to, this is how I would do it. The reason why is because I actually installed Groovy using Brew, and Brew sets up the Groovy Ohm and that sort of thing for me. So I'm not going to go ahead with this installation. Finally, we have Visual Studio Code. And this one is pretty easy. Just download um, the Mac version, run it. It's a zip file. Double click on it. It's going to expand. And then from that um, archive, you're going to get the Visual Studio Code application. And you just need to drag it and put it in place. I drop it in the application directory. It might prompt you for a password or to replace an existing one. Up to you if you want to replace it. If it prompts you for a password, it, um, it's for an admin user who can make changes to your system. Um, you should know who that user is or get somebody else to type the password um, for that user. And that's it. And that's all the tools and everything. I would say just restart your system, reboot it, so to make sure that everything get picked up in the path when you log in. And you're set. So now we can go on to installing the plugins, which we're gonna do in a different video, just because the setting up the plugins for Visual Studio Code is gonna be the same regardless of um, which platform you're on. All right. So thanks again for your time. Um, I hope that was relatively easy. Look for the links below to all these tools where you can get them. And good luck. Follow me on Twitter and, of course, Instagram. Um, I'll try to post and keep um, updates there, post updates there about what's going on and when I release videos. Um, and, of course, subscribe. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please do. And if you're subscribed, please hit thumbs up on the video and, of course, spread the word. All right, take care. See you in the next video.